Hey YouTube, in this video we're going to be discussing yeast 3 hybrids, which is a technique used to detect binding between a protein of interest and RNA. I'll leave a link in the description of this video to my video on yeast 1 hybrid if you want to check that out. I'll also leave timestamps in the description so you can jump around to the part of the video you want to watch. But first let's talk about the central dogma of biology, or how DNA becomes protein. You start off with double-stranded DNA, and then through a process called transcription, you take the coding regions or the genes of that DNA and convert it into RNA, which is the single-stranded intermediate between DNA and protein. And then through a process called translation, you take that RNA and convert it into protein. Proteins can do a lot of things, including actually be involved in transcription and translation themselves. So once a protein is made, it can one, go back and bind to DNA and help with the process of transcription, or two, go back and bind to RNA and help with the process of translation. Now let's talk about the three kinds of yeast hybrids. They're a technique used to detect protein binding. You can detect the binding of a protein to other proteins, that's called a yeast 2 hybrid, to DNA, that's called a yeast 1 hybrid, or to RNA, that's called a yeast 3 hybrid. They are used in vivo, which means in living. They're going to be done in an actual organism instead of a test tube or something like that. And the organism being used is yeast. They all utilize what's known as bait and prey, which are just scientific nicknames for the two components that are going to bind to each other. And they utilize what's known as reporters. Reporters are used in order to tell whether or not your two components actually were binding to each other. There are two types of reporters. The first reporter used is called an oxytrophic marker. If the yeast is able to grow in media deficient in certain amino acids that it needs, then you'll know that your two components actually bound to each other. The second type used is called a color metric marker, which turns the colonies a different color if the two components bound to each other. So this is an example of a color metric marker. This probably isn't a yeast hybrid, but it gets the point across. You can tell the difference between the two types of colonies by whether or not they're blue or peach. So if this was a yeast hybrid, if your two components bound to each other, then the colonies would be blue. So in this video, we're only talking about yeast 3 hybrid. If you go to the description of this video, you can find a video of mine on yeast 1 hybrid. And there are literally thousands of videos on YouTube already on yeast 2 hybrid. So if you need any help with that, go watch any of those videos. All right, now let's talk about yeast 3 hybrids, which is again a technique used to detect binding of a protein of interest to RNA of interest. All right, here's a picture showing how yeast 3 hybrids work. Don't worry if it doesn't make sense right now. I don't expect it to, but we're going to walk through it. And hopefully by the end of this video, you'll be able to make sense of it. So there are four points I want you to remember about yeast 3 hybrids. The first one, there is a section of DNA located upstream or before a reporter gene and its promoter. This DNA can either be naturally located there or you can put it there yourself. Also, you don't have to know what a promoter is for this video, but for the sake of the video, just know that the promoter is part of the reporter. A hybrid protein is also constructed that can both bind to the specific section of DNA and bind to a specific RNA. Let's go back and look at the picture. So the black line is your DNA, and it's read from left to right, from L to R. The Lexa operator, the gray rectangle, is your DNA sequence that we were talking about in the point, and it's located upstream or before the promoter and the reporter. The red rectangle and the blue oval represent your hybrid protein. The red rectangle portion represents the part of the protein that binds to the DNA sequence. And the MS2 represents the part of the protein that binds to the specific RNA. All right, the next point I want you to remember, a synthetic RNA is constructed, this is gonna be your bait, that contains both an RNA section that binds to the hybrid protein from point one and the RNA of interest. So let's go look at the picture. I've circled the hybrid RNA for you. It is the black line with a bend in the middle and a loop at either end. The loop closest to the left represents the part of the RNA that binds to the hybrid protein from one, 
and they loop towards the right is the RNA of interest, label X. The third point I want you to remember is another protein hybrid is constructed, this is going to be a prey, with both an activation domain for the reporter gene and the protein of interest. So let's go look at the picture. Circled is the hybrid protein we were referring to. The purple oval is your protein of interest, and the orange rectangle is the activation domain that will stimulate the reporter. The fourth and final point, if the protein of interest binds to the RNA of interest, then the activation domain will stimulate the reporter. Let's go back and look at the picture. If your protein of interest Y is able to bind to your RNA of interest X, then your activation domain will be close enough to the reporter to turn it on. Thus, you'll be able to tell that your two components bound to each other. If this was a color metric marker, these colonies would be blue. Below that, you can see what happens if they don't bind to each other. If your protein of interest Y does not bind with your RNA X, then the activation domain will not turn on the reporter because it's not close enough. If this was a color metric marker, these colonies would be peach. So here are the four points again, except I color coordinated them. So maybe you can go back through the video and this will help you get a better idea of what's going on. All right, well, I hope this helped. Thank you so much for watching. The picture, by the way, was from bitesizebio.com. They also have a really good description of yeast three hybrid if you wanna check that out. And I'll leave a link in the description of this video to my video on yeast one hybrid, if you also wanna look at that. All right, thank you so much, bye.